whatever this is. What is it again? Hey guys, and welcome to Little Pepper. You know what time it is. Um, we're going to talk to you guys about Insecure episode 9. We're going to do two reviews. We're going to break it down for actual whole show. And then in my next review, check it out. We're going to talk about the body language, what it meant. All right, um, if you're new to the channel, do myself, do yourself a favor. Make sure you click on that like, share, and subscribe button. And then click on that bell button for a notification of the uploads baby for those of you who are returnees you already know the motto baby you got the minerals you got the minerals are you mad are you mad are you lean again let's get into the video so i mean we open up the whole show and first i want to say this i'm going to break down for you from the isa project to first um watching isa and lawrence obviously get back together kind of do their thing um, it's obviously very interesting, right? Um, because I think anytime you get back with an ex, there's an important conversations that need to be had. Now, we saw in the last episode, um, Issa and Lawrence conversating about the past issues. Now, unless the past issues are completely dealt with, when I say dealt with, I mean they're in a the process of being dealt with. We're actually having active conversations around the issues of why we broke apart the first time. We are bound to repeat the same mistakes. Getting back with an ex is not a problem. Repeating the same mistakes is when when you when you when you've understood why you got to that point in the first place you can understand how not to get there in the second place um and so this is very very important when it comes to relationships because i think sometimes we glorify oh you know they're getting back together lovely all the little cinematic stuff that was done in the last episode with them coming onto the red and the blue and everything like that. They're going through the art gallery and all that stuff. Lovely, yeah? But the most important part when it comes to a relationship is to deal with the past traumas and the past um, points where we didn't get it right so that when we go into a new relationship, we're seeing a birthing of a new slate. Sometimes it can feel like a new slate when you go into a new relationship, but you haven't dealt with the extracurriculars that need to be dealt with. Unfortunately, it's not necessarily a new slate. And unfortunately, human beings hold on to things. And unfortunately, human beings have grudges. And unfortunately, human beings sometimes just don't forget. So it's important to address those things so that it doesn't get a trigger later on in the relationship. You know what I'm saying? So we get an opening scene where we're seeing them literally humping like rabbits, um, doing a lot of sexual intimacy. Fantastic. Great. We love it. Um, obviously, if you're a Christian, please do it when you're married, um, which obviously is going to lead to the next scene when they're going to be asking questions about what we are. Here's my thing. If you're going to give your body over, what have I told you guys about giving your body over? Your body cannot be given over in exchange for commitment. Let me say it again for you guys. I say it all the time. Your body cannot be given over in exchange for commitment. Okay? Now, when they began to, uh, began to engage in illicit behaviours of sexual misdemeanors, you understand? Um, and actually started having sex together. It was, listen, from a non-Christian point of view, fine. Right, because actually what they're saying is we wanna be we wanna be intimate on that level. Alright? Great. But if then in the next scene, okay, we are seeing you ask the question, Isa, wait, what are we? Then you got a problem. The sex shouldn't come before the definition of what we're trying to do. Why? Because the sex confuses things. I already told you guys sex is not free. Sex is about oxytocin, dopamine, and serotonin. All of these things combine to make the orgasm feel great and make you feel some type of way after you've had sex. Now, understanding that makes you understand that this sex that we're doing is for a purpose. So how is it we've got to a point where they've had sex, sat down, enjoyed each other's company, even chilled in front of the laptop they're showing us these great qualities of them doing this stuff and he's resting her head his head on her lap and stuff and you know you know and all that kind of stuff over the next like it looks like the, it looks like a few days or whatever right really enjoying each other's presence and i get it but then now we don't know what we are bear in mind you see you can't remember you're, you're trying to remove from the past you're not trying to you're not trying to live and revel and revel in the past glories so you're starting afresh again because you want to have a fresh new slate, right? So when that happens, what you need to do is then have a conversation around the, what are we trying to do and what we're trying to establish. Then you have sex. It doesn't make sense to have sex before when you have not established what you're trying to do, right? That's where a lot of us go wrong. And then we're asking, oh, you know, um, he played me. Didn't You played yourself. 
You understand? You played yourself when you didn't get a definition of what you are. You know, you end up in situationships. But let's continue. So obviously, when we see East, obviously, then try to define what, wait, what are we? Um, and Lawrence then also says, uh, I mean, I don't know what you say. Who do you want it to be? I don't know. Are you still saying what, what you what you saying kind of thing? You push the buck, so it looks like nobody's taking control of what they are. You understand? Like both parties are trying to almost have the other person take control because they're both almost scared of the rejection, and both kind of not sure where they're actually going. Which is why sex is confusing. Why add something else to the to the to the, to the table when we're not sure even where we really want to go? All right, um, you know you're adding all these directions and all these kind of things, and we don't even know what 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 destination you want to go into. So. That conversation that they had on the, on the sofa was critical because it defines where they're going to, all right? Uh, not only that, I think obviously then the conversation comes up where she gets a text from Nathan and I really appreciate the fact that Issa actually decided to ask, um, you know, um, ask firstly, foremost, um, ask uh, Lawrence if this was acceptable. I think this is good practice in a relationship. You know, consent. We're not talking about sex now. Consent to do certain things. Right, but the reason why she asked is because she knew that it was probably gonna be not the greatest idea to get with somebody who she explained go and be friends with somebody who you actually got into something with. So the truth of the matter is, you see, at least with Lawrence, we're getting an idea that yes, he's still kind of talking to Condola now he's exited it. But Issa's not being very, very truthful. Why are you going to be friends with somebody who duck ghosted you for a year, but you were kind of seeing? The story's not really adding up. What you, what, I mean, you're. What I'm kind of seeing is from Issa is that, okay, the door hasn't shut. And I'm not talking about getting back with him. The door hasn't shut in terms of, I want some closure, yeah? And I'm being your friend also at the same time. Yeah, it's with good vibes. And, and we saw that later on even when they were talking to um, Andrew and Molly in the house. And they were explaining their position about the fact that, um, they were, I think she was singing a song. And he finished the song off. It's so cold in the day. How the fuck do we folks keep pee? Right? It was really, really weird. Which, obviously, the song thing is interesting because that's a contrast of the song thing which happens with herself and um, Lawrence, which he doesn't get. So what? My San Francisco treat. See, nah. I don't fly with me. We were hamburger help with him. So they get the film references, but the song references he doesn't get, but Nathan does. And it's, I think this is really alluding to the fact that in relationships with people, we have people who get us on certain planes, but not all of it. So you have a really great person who gets you on a certain plane, but doesn't get you on this particular plane. Do you understand? So there's a really, really good intro, intro, um, contrast between the two guys. Um, but back to the story, obviously, in regards to asking about the situation. You know, women, I feel like women do this more than men. And I would like, they try to play as if they don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, you know exactly that this is, is a violation of a code. What am I saying that in the sense of, the violation is the fact that you know that there's some intention from Nathan that ain't clean. Yeah, you know this, okay? Um, and that's why when you get to the door, you start acting like, hey, nigga. You say that because you're now, you're understanding that the, this is going to be weird because now you've got a partner, which lets you know what you truly knew about what a person was think, feeling towards you, right? If you had no inclination in terms of what he felt towards you, you'd have been cool, wouldn't you? But you couldn't be cool because you knew that he was kind of feeling you, which means, therefore, this relationship was never really a relationship. It, you know, a lot of women think they have great friendship with certain guys. The guys are just waiting for the chance to pounce. So long as he got that kind of mindset, it's not a friendship. It's an opportunity. I'll say it again. So long as the guy is obviously feeling you and wanting you, it's not a friendship. He's waiting for an opportunity. And so, sometimes girls do this to kind of keep their almost cars close to their chest. But I, feel, I really feel like for Issa, it's more of a, um, you know, closure. You know, to get closure. And that's why she struggles and she's not sure if she call East, uh, call Molly about the situation. She knows that, that she, or she... She's looking for re reaffirmation or confirmation that what she's doing is not correct or is correct. That's what she's looking for. Um, she's looking for another voice to tell her, listen, hey, don't do this or do this. You know what I'm saying? Um, because obviously sometimes we we want another opinion to guide us to a certain place or we sometimes want to eradicate ourselves from um, the accountability of ourselves and are holding ourselves to account and to kind of stop ourselves from moving mad we get another person to speak on the issue um so yeah it was interesting the fact that 
um, that happened. Um, internet obviously as well. Internet obviously as well. The way that Lawrence reacted, you know, he, he he like he made a bit of a joke of it. But the truth of the matter is, it's because it's early doors. Since early doors, I can let certain things go. When you get deep into a relationship, that ain't gonna happen. And again, this is what I'm saying about not if you haven't dealt with past issues. We don't know if there's PTSD on Lawrence's side. You get cheated on, it's not free, you know. You get cheated on, it's not free. So we need to even kind of delve deeper, find a little bit deeper and say, hey, is there any PTSD from, uh, you know, from, from Lawrence in terms of the fact that they were cheating previously? Is it going to feel a certain type of way? And she, and she said it herself. She wants, to be more, she wants to be open and honest about the situation. Uh, and Lawrence really hasn't got a choice. Him moving to his new spot this week. Oh. But I don't have to if it makes you uncomfortable. I got you turned out like that? Oh. Wait, so what's he going to say? No, I'm not comfortable. Like, we don't even know what we're doing. We're not defined. So, what, 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 what am I going to say? Do you understand? So, he's got no choice. He has to let it go. Um, Issa should have really just kind of just, like, just text him and say, hey, listen, I'm not available anymore. But she wanted to go and see and bring closure. So, I get it. I think the dinner with Molly was interesting because I think Issa kind of just showed me uh, another... I don't say another side, but I think Issa just kind of showed us that in regards to the situation, she needs to address certain... No, 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 real spit. Like, I know a lot of you might be on Molly's um, case, but Issa needs to learn how to deal with confrontation. It is normal. Confrontation is part of life, yeah? And it just felt like, obviously, the fact that she was tiptoeing around the conversation because she didn't want to have that conversation in the cafe. Like, she didn't know that she wanted to have a discussion around that issue. In fact, she never asked about it. And I, that's why I agree with Molly there, in that some sense. It, you know, she never asked about Issa. She just kind of... Oh, it's done. Like she's, and I remember she even said like, "Oh, it's done. It's finished. We fixed. We've done it. We finished it." How? When you know that the person's still holding on, and you know your friend, so you know they're still holding on to the certain thing, um, and you know they're stressed about it. So why are we tiptoeing around it? And I think it's because the way that Issa deals things, she's not very good at confrontation. Um, she doesn't like confrontation, so that's why she's tiptoeing tiptoed around the issue rather than bringing it straight to Molly and say, "Hey, Molly, look. Last time we spoke, I know we was beefing. Here's what I felt. It went really well." I mean, we didn't really get that deep into stuff, but I know how she is. She's still cooling off. In a couple of weeks, I invited to Self Care Sunday, and boom, we back. This is what I felt. This is what I felt. You did this, you did this, and I wasn't right with it, and I, that's how I felt. And that's why I behaved this way. But we didn't get to see that from Issa. So um, my, my, my opinion is that, obviously, she skirts around issues like this, yeah? Um, it's not, she's not really the one for this. Um, and then obviously, later on, we see the fact that with Nathan, you know, she comes to the house and, and that first initial greeting is letting you know exactly where she stands. She's not on it, but she knows that he's on it like Sonic. So then why did you go around in the first place? My nigga! Hey, hey come on hey, in. Hey, what up? <laughs> You're having to dodge him now, obviously when you are in the, in the house, that's a bit annoying. Like, why do you have to keep dodging him? Because you know that it's not right. You know that obviously that you're, and you see, I'm not gonna mess too tough, but the fact she was wearing an orange jumpsuit, says a lot and i'll address that in a body language video but the fact is when an orange jumpsuit just deep who else wears orange jumpsuits and then deep the connection of the director was making in terms of her behavior anyway uh once she dodges him what's really clinical is the fact that what he says at the cupboard when he says oh you're going back to your boyfriend or what the one that basically you cheated on right those harsh words from nathan were intent and built to kill they were intent and built to change your mind and say, hey, don't be stupid. Don't go back to that same guy. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the words were intent and laced with poison. Um, and so when obviously she hears that, you can tell that she's taken aback by that. But when you cheated on? Uh, yeah, it's still new. We're figuring it out. Oh. <laughs> What's funny? The most important thing is the fact that he said it. Right? And you know when guys, not when guys, guys and women do this when they're, when they're hurt and they're bitter, the words that come out of their mouth are to destroy rather than to build. Their words that come out of their mouth are not there to comfort you, they are to, 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 to finish you and to cut you deep. And so what he says to her was outlandish, you know? Um, and so yeah, I mean, I think for me, just watching Nathan Issa was, was, was a good to kind of see, I guess, their relationship. I mean, when we see later on when they come to the house, um, and Issa's the only one that's kind of clocked the tension between um, Molly and, and Andrew. And I think she's trying to be sensitive. That's why when she rejects the food, she was trying to say that I'm not trying to go for the food because I know I can see that my friend is uncomfortable at the moment because she looked like she was just 
it looked like they were coming from an argument, right? And she and she could sense it, Issa. But she caved in. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were we we're just chilling. Knew it. Oh, that's okay. We are super full. <laughs> we ate. Right? She caved in when Andrew said, no, come stay, da, da, da. She caved in. She really should have gone, no, 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 we got to go. You know what I'm saying? That's why she was like, oh, no, we got to go. Like, we, we, man, don't worry about the food. We're going to bless. Because she could sense that money was not was not okay. Right? And then later on, we see, we see them chilling and having jokes, um, you know, having jokes um, in the party between themselves. And what's really interesting is the way that, I guess, um, in the way that, you know, they're interacting. So we see that they catch two joke and banter and they're having a good time and laughter. Um, but it's, it's tenuous. And the gap between the two, I think, is also saying a lot, it's telling. Um, but watching the fact that obviously then Molly then texts um, Issa to say, I'm trying. And it's like, God damn. And they have a conversation outside, which I think is very prominent, very important, which is that, you know, Molly doesn't understand where Issa's coming from. Issa doesn't understand where Molly's coming from. What I would say in this particular instance is that Molly kind of mashed it up. Like, I'm not going to lie to you, cuz. Like, you sent a wrong message, okay? You should be begging on your knees that you're sorry. Um, and then, obviously, when Issa addresses the issue about the block party, again, I think, I think there's two different conversations going on. Issa's thinking the block party is the issue. Molly's saying the issue is bigger than block party. But the two of them are not able to see that. So... Issa's not seen that, hey, it's more than a block party. And Molly's not seen the fact that Issa, doesn't, can't, Issa, can't, see beyond, Issa can't see beyond the block party. But it's the type of character trait that Issa is, the kind of person she is. She only sees that immediate issue as an issue. Other than that, she was going to try and let it go, right? I'm not saying that she's not prideful. She's also prideful, just like, a, um, you know, just like an old girl Molly there. But what Molly was kind of saying to her was that, hey, look, it has been going on for such a long time. I thought you'd address the issue. But unfortunately for her, uh, Issa didn't. She just thought it was just about the block party. And, you know, she wanted her friend back. She wanted to have a friend. She wanted to have a friend by her side. But the truth of the matter is, um, she needs to address the issue. Without it, Molly cannot function. You understand? Molly cannot go on. It's as simple as that. So, yeah, guys, um, that is the review of Issa point of view. We're going to deal with Molly. Um, as well, we're going to do the body language as well. So, guys, make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on that bell button for a notification of the watch uploads, baby. Appreciate you. Stay locked, stay loaded. More love.